This hidden sci-fi gem hits Dean Kane against a literal stone cold killer creature from space. Arctic Predator aka Frost Giant is essentially your research team isolated in the Arctic with a monster flick. But what sets it apart is its fictional take on historical Arctic explorer James Clark Ross and his lost ship, the HMS Fury, which according to the movie is due to unforeseen circumstances. I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. Talk about a brain freeze. Fast forward to the present and Dean Kane, best known from the 90s Superman show Lois and Clark, stars as J.C. Ross, a descendant of the explorer it wasn't so obvious by his name, who's become obsessed with finding the lost ship. Needless to say that once his team finds the buried ship and tunnels to it, they inadvertently unleash the trapped alien, and it wastes no time, taking them out one by one. Talk about a cold reception. As you can tell, the cool thing about this creature is that it's made out of ice and it can turn its body parts into weapons. Nice to meet you! I especially enjoyed the unique origin of the creature as theorized by Hasley, who of course I immediately recognized as Madeline Stowe's jerk suitor from Last of the Mohicans. Anyways, he figured out that the alien's original form was gaseous and that it was reluctantly transported here by a meteor's magnetism as it passed by Jupiter. And when it crashed into the Arctic Circle, it gave it its icy form. This deserves a man seven spotlight for creativity. I think I just realized why it's attracted to heat. It's trying to return to its natural state. So by being originally gaseous, the creature is essentially a heat vampire, which leads to a lot of close encounters and deaths as JC and crew try to put the alien back on ice. At least he's ready to lighten the mood. While looking for a way to defeat it, JC goes through his ancestor's diary and uncovers that Ross pretty much abandoned his crew as they sacrifice themselves to trap the alien in ice. Send it to hell, Mr. Blake. Guess their ship out of luck. Not wanting to follow the same path, JC takes the fight to the creature and pulls a Ripley by using his massive drilling machine to push the creature back through the hole while unfortunately also trapping himself. But of course, he fails to drop a good one-liner, providing an opportunity for a band slamish tag in. Looks like it's driller time. JC's sacrifice was definitely unexpected, especially after he just made up with his love interest earlier in the movie. But it was somewhat poetic as he got to write a final entry in his ancestor's journal before the lights went out. On the Van Savage meter, I give it 3.5 out of 5 masks. It kept me entertained with its unique killer creature, strong cast, and plenty of icy kills. All in all, it was a pretty cool watch. Now it's time for the top 3 signature moves. Top. Number three, the freezer burn truck. Uh, uh. I guess maybe it is cold outside. Second, the Explode Mobile Super Kick. I think I got it. Way to stick it to him. And finally, the finisher, the inhaler superplex. <laughs> Looks like it took her breath away. 
Considering the alien wasn't destroyed, it makes it right for a Van Savage sequel pitch. In the far distant future, JC's descendant, James C. Ross, also becomes obsessed with finding the HMS Fury, and eventually does, because no one warned him of the danger. They inadvertently free the alien again, and it's up to his team, an Arctic Explorer slash Winter Games Gold Medalist slash Special Forces, Jack Van Slam, to stop the creature once and for all. I call it Arctic Predator 2, Ross's Revenge. Revenge is a dish best served Arctic. Thanks again for joining me for Jack Van Slam vs Arctic Predator. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts, what your favorite moments were. Be sure to click that like button and subscribe for more ridiculousness and more slamming movie reviews. What the hell was that? And if anyone says it's the win, they're gonna regret it.